integrals in spherical coordinates. Okay, so now, suppose you have your rectangular coordinate system, x, y. Pick some point here in a space, in three space. So first, you're standing straight up and move down to where your point, so, so think of this circle here as sort of the, the height. Well, maybe what, I'll, I'll do it. I'll do it that way. So suppose that originally you have your, your pointing straight upwards, okay? And you have some point over here and you're looking in the X direction. So now think of moving theta, rotate your body, a, a angle of theta, so that now you're pointing in, so now that you're, you are looking at, not pointing, you're looking, you're pointing straight up. You're looking at the point and now pull down your uh, hand so that now you're pointing to that uh, point in space. So the angle that you move so that you're, not, you're looking at the point in space, we call theta. The, uh, Uh, angle that you have to move toes towards the point. So that angle from pointing straight up to pointing towards the point in space, call that phi. The distance from the origin to that point, call rho. These three points will uh, determine your coordinate system. And so the rho, theta and phi determine your point. Let's do it as follows. Given some uh, spherical coordinates, we can determine our rectangular coordinates as follows. Um, and you can just do that by a little bit of trigonometry. So if you just, just do a little bit of trig here, uh, this here gives you this height here is just rho cosine of phi. And then this here will give you, well, the X is just going to be, uh, well, whatever. This length is here, V uh, sine of theta. So once you have the phi sine of theta, you can determine your X and Y by just, well, the X will be the cosine of theta times your uh, rho sine phi and your sine of theta will be your y uh, once you multiply by your rho sine of phi. And so <clears throat> rho sine phi cosine theta is x, rho sine phi sine theta is y, rho cosine phi is z. So that determines your rectangular coordinate system. To determine your uh, given your rectangular coordinate system to figure out your spherical coordinates. Well, I notice the following. If I square these X's and Y's, well, X squared gives me something times cosine squared. Y squared is the same thing times sine squared. So the sine squares and cosine squares add up to one. So this x squared plus y squared is just rho squared sine phi squared. Square this, z gives you rho squared cosine 
squared phi. So the sine squares and cosine squares uh, add, add up to give you rho squared. So x squared plus y squared plus z squared is rho squared. Good. And again, if you just uh, divide, notice the divide y by x. The rows and the sine of phi's cancel, so you just get sine over cosine, which is tangent theta. So tangent theta is y over x. And well, as I said from before, uh, x squared plus y squared plus z squared is rho squared. And z squared is rho squared cosine squared. And so x squared plus y squared plus z squared is just z squared over cosine squared. And so <clears throat> cosine squared of phi is just z squared over x squared plus y squared plus z squared. So from this, you can determine, so given x, y, and z, you can determine rho, uh, phi, and theta. Now, of course, it's not uniquely determined, but at least you have at least one solution. Okay, so just like in polar coordinates, when you change these polar coordinates, when you change, uh, cylindrical coordinates, you had to multiply by some factor. We have to do the same thing when I, we change to spherical coordinates. So the integral of f over e is the integral uh, over this new region in spherical coordinates of f, and then you multiply by rho squared sine and this is in the, your new um, spherical coordinates. So let's do the following. On page 1089, in problems 21 through 34, use spherical coordinates. So problem 34, evaluate the integral of y squared, where E is a solid hemisphere x squared plus y squared z squared, where y is greater than or equal to zero. This is supposed to be, I know it's not a great drawing, but this is supposed to, so here is, okay, let's try that again. So here was a sphere. And what I've done, on, which you probably can't tell, is I've cut it. So now it only looks like part of it. So now it looks just like this and that. That's what, and so that's what I'm trying to, that's what I'm trying to draw here. So it's actually just part of it. So this, somehow this part over here was cut off. Okay. So now hopefully you can, Interpret what I tried to draw. Okay, so now let's do this. Okay. So I want to integrate. Y squared. And I'm going to change this to spherical coordinates. And that's obviously going to be nice uh, because uh, it's a sphere. So, so having that it's a sphere of uh, centered at the origin of radius three will make my life uh, nice and easy. So we're just integrating inside of this. Up. So. Let's do 
d rho, d theta, d phi. Okay, so <clears throat> I guess it doesn't matter which way I say it. Okay, so let's see. Um, I start up here. So let's do phi first, let's do phi. So notice that here's my z. So initially I'm pointing up, okay? And now I wanna make a sphere, uh, uh, well, hemisphere. So I go all the way down. So that, that will give me this part. If I start at any point, I can then draw part of a, you know, a semicircle. If I just go from zero to a pi. Okay, good. So that gives me, well, at least a line <laughs> uh, going from the top of the hemisphere to the bottom of the hemisphere. Now I want to, so that gives me the, this, these type of slices. Now, if I start pointing in the X direction, well, that gives me, and I go halfway around the circle. So if this is the next plane here, if I start here, I go halfway around, that will give me, that will sweep out the, semicircle. And so if I just go from z halfway around the circle, and so if I just go again from zero to pi, they'll sweep out this other part. Okay. Now I want to figure out how far I go f to fill in this whole hemisphere. Well, the distance is, well, zero to as far as I can go to the outer part of this, which is three. So I just go from zero to three for my row. Now I have to do the rest of it. So what's y? Well, y is this. So let's square this. And so if I square this, I get row squared sine squared phi sine squared theta. Now I actually need more room if I'm not gonna multiply this all out. But besides this, so that was, so this thing that I've written here is merely why so I need to multiply by this additional factor because that's the factor that I always multiply by when I'm integrating, uh, changing to integration in spherical coordinates. So I need to multiply by rho squared sine theta. And so I need to multiply by another rho squared and another sine theta. So this becomes rho to the fourth and this sine phi becomes sine cube phi. Okay. And that is my integration, is what I should integrate. Okay. And so now this is the integral. Let's in do some integration. So integral from zero to pi, zero to pi, integral of phi to the fourth, one fifth, phi to the phi, uh, sorry, <laughs> rho, let's integrate rho to the fourth. So it's one fifth rho to the fifth, sine cubed phi, sine squared theta, 
from row equaling zero to row equaling three. I accidentally gave differing names to my Greek letters. D, theta, D, phi. So this is equal to uh, plug in three, integral zero pi, zero pi. Uh, three to the fifth is 243 over five. Uh, sine cubed phi, sine squared theta, the minus zero, of course, uh, d theta d phi. Okay, so I'm doing theta first. So it's a sine squared. Uh, there are differing ways to integrate sine squared. Um, I don't know, probably a dozen. I think in calculus two, I did I did sine squared like fifteen different different ways. Uh, but the most way is to use the uh, half angle formula or double angle formula, whatever one you want to call it. So this is equal to integral zero pi zero pi. So sine squared is one and a half, one minus sine two theta. So this is 243 over 10. Sine cube phi, ooh. Um, one minus sine two theta, d theta, d phi. So just using that double angle formula, okay. And so let's integrate this. No, wait. It's cosine. I wrote it wrong, didn't I? It's cosine. Because it comes from the cosine uh, double angle formula. So it's cosine. Sorry about that. Okay, so it's cosine. Um, <clears throat> sure, because it's zero that gives you zero. Okay. So it's definitely cosine. Uh, let's integrate this. So this is equal to zero pi, 243 over 10, sine cube phi. So the integral of one theta. Integral of of cosine sine two theta. Uh, again, since there's two theta, you have to divide by two. Uh, between theta equals zero, theta equal pi. D phi. Okay, so plug in zero, you get zero. Plug in pi, ooh, only one term remains. Most everything is zero there. So this is equal to integral zero pi 243 over 10. Now, if I plug in pi, I won't write this first because I need a little space. If I plug in pi, I get a pi here, I get a sine of two pi is zero, plug in zero, I get zero. So this just comes out to pi. And then the sine cube phi d phi. Okay. Okay, so this is equal to. And let's put the pi there. Okay, so this is sine times sine squared. Uh, 
Oh, so I can write this is sine phi times sine squared, which is one minus cosine squared phi, <laughs> d phi. And then do a substitution, I guess, uh, where you let, I don't care when I let it, u theta, I don't care. Uh, let u equal cosine phi du is sine phi d phi, which gets rid of that. So when phi is zero, cosine is one. When phi is pi, cosine is negative one. Ooh, derivative of cosine is minus sine. That's a typo there. So that gives you a minus. Two forty three pi over ten. So that becomes just a minus du and a one minus u squared. Okay, so let's integrate this. Now oh, almost done. So 243 pi over 10. So that becomes u minus one third u cubed between minus one and one. I guess I need just a little bit more space. 243 over 10 pi over 10. So if you plug in one, you get a one minus one third. We give you two thirds. Minus, you plug in negative one, you get a negative two thirds. That's so plus two thirds. Okay, so lastly, just need about one inch more. Eh, I'll have to, unfortunately, I don't have enough room to put that down. Okay, so this is equal to two. So that's going to be a five. That's still going to keep a pi. Um, oh, that's a four. That's a four, not a two. So there's a two times divide by three. So 81 times two is 162. And so your answer is 162 pi over five. Okay, let's do. I can probably pull this up. Don't think I can pull this guy too much higher up. Okay, so let's do this. In exercises 41 through 43, evaluate the integral by changing to spherical coordinates. So problem 42, I have the following rectangular coordinates, a minus eight a integral of minus rad, uh, a squared minus y squared to 
positive rad a squared minus y squared integral negative rad a squared minus y squared minus x squared minus y squared positive rad a squared minus x squared minus y squared of x squared z plus y squared z plus uh, z cubed. Oh, that's just x squared plus y squared plus z squared times z. Uh, dz, uh, they're just trying to fool you. dz dx dy. Okay, so first off, notice, well, uh, you're going from the bottom of a sphere to the top of a sphere. You project down into the uh, xy plane. You're going from um, uh, the top of a circle, the bottom of a circle, and then you're going from, well, this is a circle of radius. These, these were the sphere of radius A. So you're going from, uh, you know, one end of the, the sphere to the other end. So this is integrating over sphere. So that's what's integrating over sphere. So <clears throat> notice that this grading over the circle above that's pro the projection down of this sphere. Okay, so let's do this. So this integral the integral hmm. from minus a to a from minus rad a squared minus y squared to positive rad a squared minus y squared integral minus a squared minus x squared minus y squared to positive a squared minus x squared minus y squared, a radical of that. And I want to integrate uh, x squared plus y squared plus z squared all times z. And dz dx dy. Okay. So let's integrate this. Well, it's a sphere. So we're just going from. Oh, and let's let's see what I want to call these. Doesn't really matter. Let's see. Let's do d row. d theta d phi. Okay, so <clears throat> notice that my phi here to, goes around the whole circle. Uh, my theta here goes around the whole circle. So I travel all the way around the circle. So I'm going from zero to two pi. Now I can go from the top of my sphere to the bottom of my sphere. So that's just zero to pi. I can't go any further than that because then I'd be, then once I went around the circle uh, with theta, I, I had already have visited it before. And now, well, rho. Well, there's a circle of, it's a sphere of radius A. So rho just goes from zero to A. Times, well, let's figure out what each of these are. So z is just rho cosine phi, okay. X squared plus y squared plus z squared is rho squared. So that, that's my z here. X squared plus y squared plus z squared is rho squared, so this becomes rho cubed. Okay. Next, I always have to multiply by I, rho squared, which makes that rho to the fifth. C 
sine phi, cosine th uh, phi, one, the sine phi. Okay, there. And so I had to multiply by my row squared, sine phi, my row sine phi was my z and my row squared was my, uh, well, x squared plus y squared plus z squared. And so that's what I want to integrate. So this is equal to integral zero to pi, zero to two pi, uh, integrating phi, uh, rho, I get one six row to the six cosine phi sine phi and this is row equaling zero row equaling a d theta d phi. So this is equal to integral 0 to pi, 0 to 2 pi, of, well, plug in a, so you get a to the 6 over 6 cosine phi phi, sine phi. D theta D phi. Well, this is just a constant. And so this is equal to integral zero to pi of, well, let's call it this way, uh, a to the six over six cosine phi sine phi times theta between theta equals zero, theta equal two pi d phi. So this is equal to, so plugging in two pi, I just get two pi times this, minus zero. So this is a to the six pi over three, I canceled the two of them, uh, cosine phi sine phi d theta, uh, d phi, d phi. Now, <clears throat> I can use the fact that uh, sine of two theta is two, maybe I'll just say that here, sine two phi is two uh, cosine phi sine phi. Sine two phi is two cosine phi. Okay, come on. Two cosine phi sine phi. So 
So let's use that. So this becomes integral zero to pi. Hmm, that was weird. Zero to pi of a e to the six pi over six. Now maybe I'll say pi a to the six. Pi a to the six over six sine two phi. D phi. So let's integrate. And so if I integrate this, this is just equal to Oh wait, pi a to the six cosine two phi. Ooh, ooh, I lost something there. Okay, <laughs> uh, between zero and pi, uh, the derivative of uh, of cosine, uh, sorry about that, <laughs> of cosine is minus sine of, then the two, oh, this should be over 12. So I should be dividing by two, not multiplying by two. Okay, so, <laughs> So this, so now let me check that I did this correctly. So the derivative of cosine is minus sine two phi times two. And so that's correct. Plug in, oops, I don't need that. Uh, plug in and pi. And so I get minus pi e to the six over 12. If I plug in pi, I get a negative one. Uh, no, plug in two pi. Sorry about that. If I plug in two pi, I get one. If I plug in zero, well, I also get one. And so this is just equal to zero. And so integrating that function over the sphere gives, just gives me a value 